It's a Halloween day at sea on the Disney Wish. Come along. Hey there, man fam. It's our day at sea on the Disney Wish, and it's the big Halloween event. We've got a lot to do today. We are going to brunch at a place we've never been to. Again, it's the Mickey's Mouse Gerade party. Lots of fun to be had, but first, coffee. It's very important. Well, the plan was to get coffee. But we got distracted. Distracted by winning again. Trivia is one of my favorite activities on a Disney cruise. There's usually between 10 to 20 different games each day with a variety of topics, but most of them have something to do with Disney. We went to Sidekick Trivia and crushed. Actually, Alan crushed because we got to the tiebreaker round. There was just us and another team. And the question was, how many strands of hair does Merida have or were digitally animated for Merida? And Alan got it right. Yeah, 1,500. 1,500 hairs. To the exact number. So, good job. Thank you for making us winners times two. And winners deserve coffee. Yes, please. I'm surprised I was able to make it through the trivia without it. That's true. It's impressive in and of itself. That is true. I still want it, though. Yeah. Also, I just want to point out how beautiful the theaters are here. So you've got the Wonderland Cinema and the Neverland Cinema, and they have this beautiful wooden like artwork along them because this one obviously is Wonderland themed, so it's Alice. And then across the way, you've got the Neverland Cinema, which is Peter Pan themed. And I just think this is really beautiful. And inside, the light fixtures in the Neverland one look like Tinkerbell. You're not able to film in the theaters, but this is where they do things like show movies. Like right now they're doing Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. Also on the cruise, they're doing Elemental. They're doing the more recent remake of The Little Mermaid. And they're doing Hocus Pocus and a couple other Halloween movies. But if you want to come catch a movie while you're on your cruise, you sure can. But I just think they're so pretty. You look so cute. I love your outfit. Are you a vampire? You sure is. Oh, you're so spooky. I love it. <laughs> I want trivia. Which one? Disney sidekicks. Amazing. Just yeah. kind of like yeah. how yeah. maybe the sidekick could be Figaro instead of Pluto. Yeah. yeah. Pluto's no sidekick. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Pluto's the number one dog. <laughs> All right, we're going to look right at Mickey's camera first. Three, two, one. And one, two, three over here. Please just see your camera. Perfect. Amazing. Okay, we got distracted by one more thing, but in my defense, he's a vampire, and it was very cute. Now coffee. Yes, now coffee. Welcome to the Wishing Star Coffee Shop. This one's Pinocchio themed, and it's very, very cute, and it's got Jiminy Cricket and his Good Conscience Award over here, and beautiful mosaic work around the bar. Uh, they also have one right above us that's called the Enchanted Sword Cafe. That one is Sword in the Stone themed, but here you can get gourmet coffees. These are not included. These are an additional cost, but you can get like lattes, cold brews. They can do the ripple art on here, and as you can see, you can do cocktails as well. Of course, there's a lot of basic coffee that you can get at the restaurants and such that is included with the cost of your cruise, but if you wanted something fancier, it's worth it to check out the coffee shops. Also, if you do decide to buy a coffee there, you get a nice punch card that can track how many coffees that you're going to get until a free one. So I believe it is five purchases of a beverage until you get a free one, which for us... That's girl that's, that's saving money. That's free coffee. That's literally free. You know, it's one of these times I'm happy the mic is pointing towards me. This is, uh... Th that math works out. That math works out. But with coffees freshly acquired, we're gonna go check out Mickey's main sale, which is the main merchandise location here on The Wish. There are many different cruise line collections, including sort of standard cruise line items and, and some more Wish specific items as well. But my personal favorite collection that you can find here at Mickey's main sale on the Disney Wish is the Wish schematic series that has all the different sort of sketches and drawings of the creation of the Disney Wish. And because it's Halloween, you can also find some Halloween items here as well. And what have you found here? I'm not normally a spirit jersey girly, I'm more of just a classic crew neck girl, but anything in this collection, I hadn't seen this before, it started in July through the year, it gives a donation to Make-A-Wish, and so now I'm thinking, am I a spirit jersey girl? Or perhaps, do you need a water bottle? You could put a lot of iced coffee in that, so I do appreciate that. I might get this one because it's glittery. Might I, might I draw your attention to the water bottle? To the iced coffee holder? Yeah, I do like it. It's cute because it's got like the stars, which is one of the themes. Um, I also like the ears, but the ears are like the sensory hair, which I think makes sense for it being make-a-wish, but I, they won't fit on my head probably. Mm. 
Um, I do like glitter. <laughs> now, I know that I mentioned that they had Halloween items here, but the crew-specific Halloween items are really neat. Look do you like ears. that ear? Do you like those ears? I'm very picky. Mm. I don't like it when it's not a bow. That's fair. But uh, could I interest you in the Halloween tree? I do like the Halloween spear jersey, but they're sold out of most sizes, so. Well, it's a popular item, I imagine. It's a popular item. I think the artwork is very, very cool. Also, justice for Goofy as a tree. <laughs> Remember when he was a tree? He was a tree at Disneyland last year. He's a tree uh, if you go to Goofy's kitchen. Uh, Do I need a child shirt? You know? It's a cute shirt. Enjoyed a wonderful latte and very beautiful musings from the violinist. Explored the shop, and now it's time to go back to our room to get ready for Enchanté because that's a classy place, and we are not dressed in classy fat. No free feet content. I'm sorry. Oh my god. Still wearing sandals after Agatha. You know what, Alan? I think if you want to wear sandals, you should wear sandals, and you should let those grippers fly. You believe this? Who are you talking to? <laughs> First of all, how dare you? Second of all, well played. All right, made it back to the cabin. Got to get ready for Enchanté. Can't look like this, so we'll see you in a second. That's better. Yep. Let's go to Enchanté. Super excited to go to Enchanté. And as a little PSA, a life lesson we just learned is there are not irons in the rooms. I'm very used to Disney hotel rooms where they always come with an iron. They don't have those on board of the Disney Cruise Line for obvious safety reasons. They don't have steamers either and you can't bring them. Now you can use the laundry facilities. They have complimentary irons that guests can use uh, or you can actually do dry cleaning on the ship. We actually did that for some other outfits because um, they will pick it up at your room, bring it back. Very reasonable cost, I thought. They can clean it or press it only, but just a little PSA. If your clothes get wrinkled, you're gonna have to use a, an iron in a laundry facility or do some dry cleaning. We have made it up to the adult dining facility. This is where you have both Palo and Enchanté as well as the Rose, which is a Beauty and the Beast themed lounge. It has the most stunning Rose centerpiece right here made out of pages of a book, as well as the Magic Mirror. We'll definitely be up here for a cocktail at some point, but for now we're gonna do brunch at Enchanté, which we've never eaten there and I'm super excited. And I think it goes without saying that we're not gonna be videoing during the meal because one, this is a signature adult experience. It's very luxurious and fancy and to, well, no, that's it. It's a luxurious signature fancy meal. We don't want to be interrupting other guests that are enjoying their, their luxuriation time. So we're going to record a video of the food and take notes as always, but we'll do the video afterwards. Enchanté is a signature French restaurant brought to you by three-star Michelin chef Arnaud Lemont. They serve brunch and dinner as well as a dessert-only tasting experience. There is a dress code at Enchanté. Formal or semi-formal attire is recommended. So slacks, dresses, just look fancy and nice. You can wear casual day wear such as polished jeans. However, things like pool attire are absolutely not permitted. The restaurant is subtly themed to Lumiere, although he will greet you on your way in. And when you walk in, you will see the most beautiful chandelier designed to represent champagne with 500 handmade glass bubbles. There are two different prefix menus offered at Enchanté, one that you can see here and one that you will not, or you can choose to go a la carte. We chose the five course prefix that is not listed on the menu and it was $80 per person. And we also added the $40 per person champagne pairing. Before our first course arrived, we were treated to an amuse-bouche as well as our first pour of champagne, a Tattinger, which is a dry and crisp rosé, along with some incredible bread and butter. In fact, this bread was made by a master baker in France and then imported onto the ship, and the butter was the same. Made in France about 20 minutes away from where our server lives in Bordeaux, and also brought here to the Wish. 
As far as the amuse-bouche, it was lemon custard topped with whipped beeswax and edible flowers along with toasted pollen, and on the side was a honeycombed served with a caramel sauce and edible flowers. It was an incredibly balanced dish as far as flavors and textures go, with equal parts acidity with that citrus notes, some floral taste from the edible flowers, a little bit of bitter and sour. It was just an incredibly refreshing and light dish to start off our experience. The first official course of the brunch was the tomato course, and I didn't know tomatoes could come so many ways, but we were served a tomato miso pie made with tomato and an anchovy condiment alongside a tomato sauce made with uzu and basil. You also get a bowl of a tomato vinaigrette alongside a croissant style focaccia bread to dip in, and then you get tomato water in a stemware glass with some ice cubes, which... I was a little concerned about. I, I wasn't sure what was going on with all of this tomato, but I gotta say, very pleasantly surprised. There's a crispity crunchity to the tomato pie that broke up the kind of creamy texture. Uh, lots of brightness from the natural sweetness of the tomato. I also didn't mind the tomato water. It was kind of like drinking a very light version of a Bloody Mary mix, very refreshing. Um, but the winner for me for sure of this was the focaccia style croissant or the croissant style focaccia. It was an absolutely delectable piece of bread with lots of rosemary um, and you would dip it into that tomato vinaigrette and it was delightful. I was pleasantly surprised how uh, versatile this one fruit was. Our next course was a delightful fish course, the name of which I cannot pronounce, and I did not want to ask our server another time to pronounce it for me. The fish was incredibly light, buttery, and flaky, and it was served with a yellow wine sauce that had been aged for six years and four months, alongside pearl onions with a garlic shoot and mustard condiment, and all of that was coated in a reduced muscle glaze. And when I tell you that I didn't think I was a seafood person, I'm very clearly wrong about that. This is perhaps one of the best seafood dishes that I have ever had, bar none, because of how the flavors melted together. It was bright, buttery, with a little bit of acidity to help counterbalance everything, and that mustard sauce was to die for. We also got our second pour of champagne, Pop Champagne, which is cute in these little mini bottles, and the label itself was designed by Louis Vuitton. It was delicious. Not very sweet, paired perfectly with both the fish dish and the chicken, which was our next course. Honestly, I'm going to look for it in stores, not just because of how cute the bottle is. The chicken was cooked sous vide and stuffed with mushrooms and topped with a brandy sauce, and it served alongside a pesto pine nut tortellini, which I ate. And I did not. I got potato gnocchi. The chicken, of course, was cooked to perfection. I loved the brandy sauce accompanying it, and I'm a big mushrooms fan, so I loved those as well. Added that earthiness to the chicken. This dish was fine, but honestly, I was the least impressed with this one because I think it is the most unoriginal. The tortellini was very good as well. I was pleasantly surprised that there were actual pine nuts in the tortellini, which added a nice crunch. It was a very savory flavor. They are very good. That said, I was still very jealous of Alan and his potato gnocchi. Y'all, this gnocchi was incredible. It had one ingredient, potatoes. That's it. And they were like light, fluffy bits of pasta that just melted in your mouth and you ate them. I don't know how they maintained their structural integrity on the plate because of how light they were and how they melted in your mouth. And y'all, everything we've said so far, none of it matters because the reason I came to this brunch was for the next course, the cheese course. We were served five different French cheeses, a machango style sheep's milk cheese, a gouda-like cheese, a brie cheese, an unaged goat, and a blue cheese that was made from the center of France near where they bottle all the fancy waters like Evian. Y'all, I was in heaven with this delectable cheese plate. My favorite was that manchego style cheese, which you may know as a Spanish style cheese. Um, however, the two areas of Spain and France that make this cheese are just divided by a mountain range. So you've got the French side and the Spanish side, but they have that real nice nuttiness to it. The blue cheese was certainly funkier than the rest, but it wasn't overwhelming. The goat cheese was smooth and tangy. The brie was perfect. And the Gouda cheese had that kind of earthy sharpness that you expect with Gouda. I mean, I could have eaten this just this and been thrilled with the brunch, but needless to say, cheese plate, a success. Before we had our dessert, we were served our final champagne pairing, the Moet Ice, which is a chilled champagne that's sweeter than normal that is intended to be served with ice to sort of water down that sweetness. It was very, very nice. Thankfully, not overly sweet with some light bubbles and a very, very refreshing compliment to dessert. We also got espresso, which was good because I was fading fast and needed caffeine. And prior to our dessert arriving, we received some pre-dessert dessert, which were rum cake with vanilla and some praline chocolate tarts. 
Of the two, the praline chocolate tart was my favorite. I just love praline number one and two chocolate, and that was a delectable bite-sized combination of both. The rum cake was nice, though not my favorite, and certainly not as good as our dessert. The main dessert was basically an ode to the raspberry. You are served this beautiful flower-shaped raspberry tart that is uh, filled with a mandarin orange and aloe foam. And on the side, you're given a freshly made raspberry sorbet topped with meringue and then a raspberry sauce. Y'all, I mean, you gotta love the raspberry, which I do. This was one of the best desserts I have ever had. It was light, it was bright, it was fresh, it was not artificial tasting at all. I loved the different combinations of texture. So you had the creamy and cool ice cream, the kind of crispy crumbly meringue, the foam that was nice and smooth, and it's kind of all on a shortbread cookie. Like it was so delicious, so simple. It kind of bookended the meal that started with a bunch of tomato, ended with raspberry, delightful. That was a lot of food. Amazing, amazing. I think potentially one of the best dining experiences I've ever had. Just, I mean, wow. just in terms of like the quality of the oh, food, yeah. uh, the fact that we ate so much, but I'm not disgustingly full right now. We also chose the five course meal, but it was more like a seven course meal because they did like a little amuse bouche, they did a little extra dessert. You snuck in surprise courses on us. Surprise snacks. I mean, I'm not mad about it. No. One thing you should know if you're going to do the adult brunches at Palette or Enchantate, they're very long experiences. They're designed to be a luxurious, foodie experience. So that was like two and a half hours long. So um, you may not want to carve out that time on your sea day. You may want to sit by the pool and luxuriate and relax. Totally amazing. But if you are a foodie like we are, that's another option you can do. Plus, it'd be really boring if our video was just us sitting by the pool for three hours. Hmm. As much as I enjoy that. People watching the video. <laughs> can't do that. No, we can't do that. <laughs> uh, this experience certainly isn't for everyone. The food is very elevated. You can certainly tell that the chef was trying to tell a story with the food that they provided. I mean, we had two dishes that were totally devoted to a singular fruit. One, the tomato, and then at the end, the raspberry. So it was incredible for somebody like Molly mentioned who is a foodie. Uh, but what I guess I'm most curious about is what do you think you'd like more or recommend more, Palo or Enchante for brunch? I loved Enchante. I thought it was amazing. The cheese course in particular and the dessert, incredible. We had lovely service, beautiful space, but as a lover of cheese and carbs, you cannot beat the pizza or that chicken parm at Palo. It's also a lower price point, which is nice. And I think it's just, um, if you're not going to be a foodie and into these very beautiful but unique and very different creations, um, Palo is a little bit more... Accessible, I think. Uh, yeah, everyone's going to like Palo because who doesn't like pizza? I think I agree with you. Palo is for the price and what you and for what you're getting. I just think it's hard to, I think it's hard to beat. Um, but the food lover in me and the person who likes to think they know about food, even though I'm sure I don't, in comparison to people who actually know and study this stuff, um, I know that I'm not going to have an experience like Enchante ever again. And that said, as uh, much as I love Palo, I do want to do the other offerings at Enchante. There's a longer, more extravagant brunch that's a little bit higher price point. There's also a, an a la carte option where you can try different things. Um, so I definitely, this is not my last visit to no. Enchante. Um, but for now, I'm very full of cheese and dessert and champagne, which is never a problem. But do you want to like walk around the ship, maybe play a game or something? Well, let's, let's walk yeah. this off. Here. Yeah. <laughs> Disney Uncharted Adventure is a virtual reality. Nope augmented reality game that's aboard the Disney Wish only and you use your app and basically there's a cute little story but Mickey and Minnie need help with their magic spy glasses which are right here on the phone. So you click that and then you can look and see different constellations like there's Finding Nemo, there's Peter Pan, there's Moana and you pick one of them and you go on a mission to help them and then once you do them all something happens. So we did Princess and the Frog last time? Yes. So let's do Peter Pan this time, and then you can either join the quest or lead the quest. I'm gonna lead the quest, so that way you can join in. Let's go. Our first clue, a piece of the Wishing Star Magic has landed near London, um, and we need to head to this, which is the menu outside 1923. Let's go. Are you ready? Yes. Where am I going? Oh, hit it. should I hit the lightnings? No, you should hit the, the stars. Oh, the stars. You gotta slow down a little bit. Avoid How the lightning and hit down? the stars. Hit the stars. Oh, I, oh, Peter. I'm sorry, Peter. I'm a gamer. Why am I so bad at this? You are a gamer. I'm just 
electrocuting Peter Pan. Oh! <laughs> I finally figured out how to move, but I just moved him into it. How long is this adventure? A miracle, honestly. <laughs> no! Captain Hook's involved. It's bad, guys. It's bad. Tinkerbell. Oh, she's coming to us. Wait, we're at Neverland? We are. Oh, okay, Hook's let's go to Hook's. Do we get an old fashioned there? I don't think it's open yet. Okay, we have arrived at level four at Hook's Barbary. For the majority of the day is a barber shop. And then for about a four hour period becomes the best bourbon bar on this ship. I long for that hour. Anyway, we're here. We're gonna check out what we have to do to find Tinkerbell. Okay, yes, we are here. Continue. I've arrived. Focus on the lanterns in the window. Begin. <gasps> Captain Minnie seemed to help you. I brought all the keys I could find. I just don't know which ones go with these lanterns. Can you figure it out? This is cool. Okay. It goes in there. Oh, that one I got, I, it turned out when I fixed it. Okay, so then this one goes here. It's gonna turn out, nice. And this last one is this key. They all three open, and we freed Tinkerbell, I think. All right, glad we got that sorted out. Excellent, we had excellent performance. It's interesting how you get the like matching puzzle and I get the actual cave. It is, honestly, one would normally swap that, but Peter is now flying to the ship. His shadow, also there, seemingly confused. The old codfish hook has a shiny new treasure. We have to go find his shadow at the Figaro and Cleo mosaic art. It's right there. Oh. Scan the artwork. Oh, found the shadow. <gasps> Tap Peter Pan's shadow on your device screen to flash it with light. Okay, are you ready? <laughs> I'm flashing it with light. It looks like the piece of the wishing star is on a pirate ship, but Minnie said that she knows I'm brave enough to recover it. I think that's really nice that Minnie believes in me. So for Minnie, I will do this. Would you look at that, Smee? Peter Pan and his motley crew are here to lay claim to our treasure. You gonna let him talk to you like that? With measly weasling talk. I did wait till their rains as poor as their pockets. Sky. Sky. I'm a gamer. I'm a gamer. <laughs> Come back here, you scallywag. I'm taking a Davy Jones's locker. Oh my god, how many are there? It's the boss, it's the boss, it's the boss. Oh my gosh. You're doing so great. Come on, you got this. We did it. Okay, I liked the Peter Pan adventure a lot more than the Princess and the Frog adventure because it was more hands-on. Very interactive. Um, I think if you are a family who just wants to have an activity to do aboard the ship, you don't have a trivia, you don't have a meal, and there's something you want to get active and explore, this is a really, really good option. I thought the lantern thing was cool. I thought the final game was cool. It's also fun because you can do like little pockets like this at a time. Like we just did the Peter Pan one and we can pick it back up and do another little chapter if we want to later. It's great if it's like a little bit of a rainier day or it's crowded out on the pool deck. So I like this game. I still like the midship detective agency more on the dream and fantasy because I like the physical aspect of having the card, but a cute game to check out. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. But with our work done, yeah, uh, let's go. Those pirates. Let's go luxuriate on the pool deck. Oh, yeah. Made it to the adult area on the Disney Wish. Now there are multiple pools located throughout the ship. All of them for families, and they also have areas we can show movies and shows and the main stage sections. Along with those larger family pools, there's even a splash area for kids themed to Toy Story. But here's where we're going to be: at the cove and quiet adult area. Now I know that The Wish is not the most popular Disney Cruise Line ship. It is actually my favorite ship, which is kind of a controversial opinion, but I will say the biggest flaw in my opinion about the ship is the adult pool area. There's only one hot tub in the main part of the adult pool area, and it's kind of like under the Aquamouse. Otherwise you have to pay for the Rainforest Package inside Census Spa. 
Additionally, this area is just a lot smaller than it is on the other cruise ships, especially the Dream and the Fantasy. So while the ship has a lot of great stuff for adults, all the different themed lounges and a variety of entertainment, I would say the adult pool area is its biggest flaw. Drinks have been acquired to enjoy out on the pool deck. This is my favorite cocktail I've ever had on a cruise ship. And I'm so excited to put it in my mouth again. Better than an old passion. This is the best pool deck drink I've ever had on a cruise ship, and I'm so excited to put it in my mouth again. It is called the Strawberry Basil Pop Spritz. So basically, these drinks have house-made popsicles, and then they mix them with different combinations of champagne. This one has got Ciroc Vodka and Moet Ice, which is champagne that's a little bit sweeter, and it's designed to be drunk on ice. So you've got that really refreshing sweet champagne um, curbed by the vodka, and then the flavoring comes from the strawberry basil popsicle, which slowly melts into it. It's not sugar added. So if you're like me and doesn't want something sugary sweet, but you still want a tropical vacation-y vibe, this is it. You know when you dream of something for so long and then you're like a little afraid that when you have it again, it's not going to be as good? Yeah, I do. It's not what's happening here. Oh, well, that's good. No, it's better than I remembered. It's perfection. And I picked up the Smoky Melon. It's my first time having this particular cocktail, but it is gin, watermelon liqueur, and coconut juice with a squeeze of lime. Coconut juice? Coconut uh, water. Coconut water. Coconut water. So it's my healthy. Apologies. So yeah, it's, you were hydrating ourselves here healthy healthy pursuits hot tip friends you know what's funny is as i was videoing this i got the you passed your step goal oh, did you <laughs> pop up on my screen and i was like it's all about balance listen we, we have been uh taking the stairs almost yeah, exclusively this true. time around that's true and hashtag you know what? healthy pursuits yeah that's it's the same for sure um if you don't like coconut water probably not going to be the drink for you light on the melon flavor the gin shines through however the juniper flavor of the gym gin actually becomes kind of smoky when paired with the coconut water so it is pretty smoky with just some light watermelon that matches the name it's very refreshing so uh, i guess what we're trying to say is if you need us we're going to be here for the foreseeable future Correct. until of course our halloween costume reveal as we get ready for the halloween festivities this fine evening so see you then cheers go wildcats fabulous we're Troy and Charpe. The natural combination. I know you might be thinking, Molly, why aren't you Gabriella? I don't think anybody's thinking that. Charpe is my favorite character and the true hero of High School Musical. <laughs> so I'm glad no one would associate with me Gabriella, the actual villain. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wait till the pod. I got lots to say. I'm sure you do. Oh boy, that's a little sneak peek right there. But... Uh, this evening we are headed to the Triton Lounge <laughs> to have some light bites and snacks for dinner. No, we're not. We're, we're headed to Keg and Compass. Right. <laughs> but this evening we are headed to Keg and Compass to have some light bites for our dinner. Now, normally we would have one of the rotational dining experiences. We actually are set up to have Arendelle, the Frozen character interactive experience for dinner. Um, but one, we've done it before, we've showed it on video, so we figured we'd show something else. And two, it's quite a long dinner experience, and we don't want to feel rushed to go to the Halloween party and then through the dinner, we want to meet some characters and do some trivia and other things. So like, while the rotational dining is amazing, you should absolutely do it if you're, it's your first time on the ship. Yeah. If you've got a Frozen loving fan, we want to try something new. So, off we go. We away. Fabulous. What team? Ice tea imported oh, wow. from okay. England. Okay. okay, okay. Turkey imported from Maine. Keg and Compass is your sports bar on the Disney Wish, but it's a little bit different than some of the other Disney cruise lines because it's Viking themed. And you're going to see that illustrated in the artwork and the music. I love the ceiling, except for one part. We've just got the different seafarers around the world, so you're going to see different Disney characters pop up. There's also this really cool nod to Maelstrom, which is the attraction in the Norway Pavilion in Epcot that was replaced by Frozen Ever After. This is a quote that you could hear on the attraction. Also, another cool detail in here is that the giant squid is stealing a, a Mickey waffle. And I really like that because squids and I have that in common. Keg and Compass is known for having a bunch of different beers on tap. They'll have anywhere from like eight, nine to 15 different beers on tap. They have a couple of beers that you can't get anywhere else and they do have some food as well. They also have some pub grub if you'd like a little nosh like wings or fish and chips. Those are an additional cost. They're not included with the trip, but that is what we're gonna eat tonight because we have found that the pub food on the Disney Cruise Line is fantastic.
We started off our meal at Keg and Compass with two of the exclusive beers to the Disney Wish, which gave us an opportunity to use our mugs. That's right, the best kept secret of the Disney Cruise Line is their mug club, where you pay $16 for the mug and your first beer, which is a 21 ounce pour instead of the 16 ounce pour, and you are able to continue to refill that mug throughout your cruise for the price of a 16 ounce pour. That includes happy hours, and as if it couldn't get any better, you can bring those mugs back cruise over cruise over cruise, which is what we do. You know I am weak for any kind of exclusive beer, and there are three on the wish. The Uncharted Lager, the Twisted Tentacle Ale, and the Maelstrom Stout. I tried the Uncharted Lager, which is the lightest of the three, and it kind of reminded me of if a Corona and a Heineken had a beautiful, refreshing baby. And I picked up the Twisted Tentacle Ale, which had some delightfully deep, spicy floral flavors that ended with a caramelly finish. It was a really refreshing beverage. And for our bites, we grabbed the loaded potato puffs, which are fried potato puffs, a.k.a. tater tots, topped with nacho cheese, jalapenos, crispy bacon, scallions, and sour cream, as well as some buffalo wings. We decided to get the buffalo as well as the sweet chili at the recommendation of our cast member. The potato puffs were good, albeit nothing super exciting. There were a lot of them. This was a massive portion that could have easily been shared by multiple people. The cheese sauce was zesty. I love the jalapenos. I actually wish there was a little bit more heat going on. And honestly, my biggest complaint is there were too many potatoes for how many toppings there were. They needed a lot more cheese and a lot more bacon. And I was pretty darn impressed by the wings. They were juicy on the inside with crisp skin on the outside. The buffalo wing was very tasty, but it did not hold a candle to the sweet, spicy chili. That was amazing. It had a very slight, almost soy taste to it with a little bit of heat on the back end. Honestly, I was pretty darn impressed. Had some delicious eats, and now we're headed up to the top deck to watch Mickey's Mouse Carade Party, the Halloween show. And we'll come down and say, oh, oh, see you soon, everybody, and happy Halloween! It was so cute. Also, I bought this. It's an alien dressed up as Buzz. Ha, I needed it. It was a $5 straw at the pool bar. But, like, literally, it's the alien dressed as Buzz, and he has a little pumpkin. I needed it. As far as the show goes, one thing that I have to call out immediately, the acrobatics and dance capabilities of those characters, incredible. Chippendale moved at a speed I did not know chipmunks could move. Goofy slid on his knees across the stage. It was wonderful. It was really cute. I mean, it's just the characters having a little dance party, but definitely worth it if you're on a Halloween on the High Seas Cruise. That's gotcha. why you're here. And for now, we're going to head down, do some more trivia, maybe meet some of the spooky characters, and just have a fun evening. There's an adult Halloween party coming, too, um, but I, oh my gosh, I want to meet Goofy in that bone costume so bad. It's so cute. Why is there a bone in his hat? It makes no sense. We no. must meet him. We'll have to ask. Big hug. Oh, I'm Sharpay from High School Musical. Are you a fan? Oh my oh, and goodness. And Troy. Oh my goodness. Yes, yes a wild cat. Yeah, nice to meet you. Oh my goodness. Now I have a question. Speaking of pets, why does your hat have a bow? Oh, you don't need it. Mira, is that part of your body? Yeah, it's a whole skeleton. You're so cute. No, this is a great outfit. I love this yeah. outfit. This yeah. one has the whole thing. I saw your dancing up here. Very, very impressive. Oh my goodness. Thank you. Yes, of course. We're going to look also at the goofy camera. 
Next, we stop by Nightingale's, which is the main piano bar on the Wish that specializes in wines, bubbles, and some handcrafted cocktails. We picked up the Stepmother, which is Blanton's single barrel whiskey, Antica, Carpano, and Ginger. This is a very deep and rich flavor. You can very lightly taste the ginger, but what really shines here is the Blanton single barrel whiskey. It is so delightful. And if you're a whiskey drinker, this is a great cocktail. Well, we met Goofy, and despite our best efforts, we still don't know why he has a bone in his hat. I think it's because he's a bonehead. Nice. Crushed. Wow, that's good. That must be it. Yeah, it has to be. We also had a lovely nightcap at Nightingale's, themed after uh, Lady Tremaine, Drizella, Anastasia. Sort of the trio well, situation. It's called the stepmother, so it's really... Well, we, they also have the Anastasia. We didn't drink that. Right, right. We had the stepmother. We had her lovely drink. Look at how happy she is. It's because we had her drink. <laughs> She's not very nice, but her cocktail is fantastic. <laughs> it, it is. It is nice. It has a bubble on it. Of elderberry. And now we are headed to Oogie Boys. <laughs> your mother was a hamster and your father's taste of elderberry. Hold on. I fought in your general direction. Are you good? <laughs> have you not seen Monty Python? I have. We are professionals. Brr, brr, ma, 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 ma. Get your head in the game. Let's go. Okay, and now we are headed to Oogie Boogie's Villainous Nightmare Bash. This is an adult-only Halloween dance party, but we hear there may be a special guest. I hope there is. I hope it's Oogie Boogie. I hope it's a bag of bugs. Those are synonyms. Oh, that's what he is. I really should watch that movie. Let's go. All your nightmares are making my stomach crawl. Of course, that could just be all of mine. <laughs> so let's keep it going with one of my favorites. Show them how it's done. Well, that was a hoot and a half. Nope, nope, it was two hoots. Wow, I was gonna say it was both Oogie and Boogie. <laughs> oh, nice. But who knew he'd be there? Me, because I asked beforehand. But it doesn't list that, so it's a fun surprise. It is a fun surprise. Well, today is our main Halloween day, so I've gotta know, mm. what was your favorite activity of the day? I love meeting the characters always, but I think they're super duper cute in their little Halloween outfits, especially Goofy with his little bone hat. But I also really liked the dance party with the characters. Like, I was very impressed with their moves. They really crushed it on the dance floor. So the masquerade is yours? I loved the masquerade. <sighs> what about you? Enchante. Oh, Halloween classic. No, Technically, it happened on the day. <laughs> it did, and you know, it was delicious. And it was great. Overall, though, it was another fabulous day aboard the Disney Wish, and we've got two more fun-filled days ahead. We do. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to like and subscribe if you are new. Follow us on all of our socials, and if you want to join in the conversation about this or any of our videos, join us on Discord. The links for all that, down below. Let us know who your favorite Disney villain is down in the comments. I am very curious to know. Mine, Yzma. Hades. One of my favorites. Ooh, a good choice, Hades. a classic choice. Who thinks the most evil, though? Well, the most petty Maleficent. is Maleficent. Mm -hmm. The most evil... I think Cruella's up there. I mean, she was a murder puppy. The Horned King. Little puppy. The Horned King. Puppy. Horned King. Horned King. Scar wants to murder his own brother. That's pretty bad. No, Frollo he does. He does murder his own brother. Oh, yeah. Now, Frollo, because of religious trauma, is up there, too. Sorry to everyone out there. But anyway, 
Let us know who your favorite or the most uh, the most villainous villain is, maybe. Yeah, absolutely. And until next time, friends, I'm Molly. And I'm Alan. And it has been spooky and fabulous. It has been. Did you forget that Scar literally murdered Mufasa? I said he wanted to. Not no, no, I, no. He, he executed I that plan. I blocked the trauma, He executed. Alan. This is why millennials are Get ruined. It. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>